hopefully, hopefully this is the talk that you're <laughs> hoping to see. You made it down to Delhi, which is good, because it's like right at the back of the conference centre. Uh, I'm Neil McDougall. It's my colleague, Richard Cox. Uh, we're both from SUSE. We're going to talk about Stratos. We're going to talk a bit about where it's come from, where it is today, and then where we're going to be going with it. Uh, in case uh, you don't know what Stratos is, uh, real quick, uh, it's a web-based UI that allows you to uh, for developers and admins to manage your applications as well as your Cloud Foundry deployments. Um, it's open source, actually developed by us in SUSE. We've got a growing set of contributors who are, are adding features and code. You can uh, manage multiple Cloud Foundry deployments. This is probably one of the, the key differentiators of Stratos versus some other UIs. It's easy to deploy. You can deploy it uh, into Cloud Foundry CF Push. Uh, we deploy it into Kubernetes as well. You can deploy it to Docker, either an all-in-one or multi-container with uh, Docker Compose. Kind of why am I here? Why are Richard and I here? Maybe not why you're here. Um, we want to grow awareness, have more people use it, more people contribute, uh, get more of the word out. So take it for a spin, please. Uh, let us know if you're using it. We know there are loads of people that are using it, but they don't tell us. So that'd be super useful to know. Um, help us improve it, enhance it. We'll come on to this at the end, but if you've got ideas for UX improvements, features that you would like, or even you know, code itself, then um, let us have them. OK, here we go. So we're gonna, I'm going to whistle stop back about a year ago and take you through where we've been over that year. And then I'm going to give Richard as much time as possible to give you a demo of how it is today. And then I'll wrap up with where we're going next. OK, so this time last year, uh, Stratos was kind of new. I was here in Basel. Um, I did a very short lightning, lightning talk on the last day. There was less people than this. Um, it looked a bit like this. It was in the SUSE GitHub repo. Um, there was some talk, as Dr. Max mentioned, about maybe upstreaming it. And at that time, it was only really SUSE that was using it. Roll on to sort of January this year. Uh, it had been proposed and accepted as an extension project. We've moved into the GitHub repo. We've got a Slack channel. Starting to see more people use it. SUSE itself released a 1.0 version. Uh, we decided to drop the UI suffix. So you may see that still from time to time, but we, we affectionately just call it Stratos now. And then we started working on version 2, which is what we'll show you today. Uh, in April, I'll whiz through this. So we were at the US summit. Uh, there was an on-stage demo. We started to switch to things like Travis so that we're developing more out in the open so people can see CI, CD pipelines, monthly meeting. And then somewhere along the line, we managed to pick up an official logo. I don't quite know how that happened, but that's it there. I have a launch in July. This was the first 2.0 release. Uh, this is a big refactor. I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, that was the focus of work for quite some time. But we did also make a number of improvements, which Richard will show you. Uh, so one of those big refactors was switching from AngularJS, or version 1, to version 2. As I said, this was a big piece of work. We also did sort of technology refresh using you know, stuff you'd expect to see, TypeScript, uh, you know, RxJS, and that kind of stuff. But this was, was a month, multi-month effort. So for a while, we kind of backed off features, and we spent more time just uh, redoing the technology platform. We also switched the front end to using Material Design if you're familiar with that, and leverage more sort of standard widget um, libraries and less of our own. So hopefully it'll be more familiar to people. So it looks a bit more like this now and less like what I showed before. More visual cues. So we did spend some time trying to improve the UX as we went along, so more UX uh, visual cues, more card layouts, trying to really surface some of the things you might care about. Uh, the 2.1.0 release, which we've just uh, done uh, last month, one of the main things was support for SSO login. So if you had seen it before, you'll notice you could only log in via Stratus' own username and password, but obviously many people have UEA doing multi-factor auth um, or various custom authentication mechanisms. So now you can log into Stratos via SSO, and that's what our friends at IBM demonstrated this morning. Uh, there's been various restructuring in the code to make it easier to develop with. Um, let's see, performance improvements when you push it, and a bunch of other features, which I'll let Rich talk about. I mentioned uh, last month we also did a community survey so we're keen to get as much input from people as possible, find out how you're using it, what you'd like to see. Some of the key takeaways, 17 responses, maybe doesn't sound many, but for us that was quite good, uh, from 14 different organizations. Lots of people are actually using it to manage multiple Cloud Foundries, which was good to hear back, because that's something we as SUSE kind of asserted was important. So it's good to hear that back from other people. And maybe a bit of surprise, people are actually, <laughs> to us at least, managing thousands of apps across hundreds of orgs and spaces. Um, so the scale that we were seeing from our users was probably bigger than we'd, uh, we'd appreciated. And we're starting to see some good uptake on V2. 
These slides will be out there, so you can still go in and add to the survey if you want to see more detail and results, the, the links in those. A growing user base. So I've only mentioned four companies. These are the people that are happy for me to stick their logo up. I know there's a lot more than this. Um, these are also happen to be the companies and organizations that have actually contributed code to the project. So we're very grateful for that and for their support. And now I'm going to hand over to Richard, who will show you 210 or 212, I think it is, and um, some of the stuff we've added more recently. So I'm going to take you through some of the, two, the, the new V2 features, some of the new new V2 features, and some of the features that we've, we've brought across. Um, it's not going to be exhausted because I don't have time to show you everything. Um, one thing I'll note as we come into this, this, uh, this front end has been configured to use SSO. Um, as was kind of demonstrated this morning, I can click on login. And we get taken through to the, the well-known Cloud Foundry UAE uh, SSO login. So I will do that now and try not to typo. So once you've logged in, you get taken to the application wall. Um, here you can see all of the applications in your cloud, any Cloud Foundry that you've um, connected. So that can be one, that could be many. Um, and you can filter by organization and space and do other um, list-based uh, things. You can see here that each application has um, some kind of color, color status to it. So again, you're being drawn into places where you might need to do something. So the billing server, the staging has failed. So as, as a user of the system, you might need to, to sort that out. What I'm going to do now is deploy an application which is going to go perfectly. Uh, so I'm going to select the organization and space that I wish to, to deploy in. Um, and then I'm going to deploy from a public, uh, public GitHub repo. And if I can get the name right. There we go, finally. Finally, we're there. So uh, in version one, this is where basically your, your deploy experience would almost end. You'd hit the deploy button, um, and then you get taken through to um, a, a stream of, of your app being deployed. In version two, we can now select the commit, which is kind of, poor, kind of important, so we're not just deploying from head. Um, we can um, add some overrides. Uh, so previously, if you tried to deploy the same manifest twice, you would obviously in the second deploy just overwrite the first deploy. So now we can do things like um, supply a custom name. We can tell it not to start. Um, change the stack, memory, disk quota, number of instances, things that have to do with the route. We're going to create a random route. And now we're going to hit deploy. And here we should start seeing the stream. OK, it's rather interesting because it was working 10 minutes before, but as it's a live demo, obviously, it's not working now. Um, so in classic, here's one I've uh, created earlier. Um, so this is, a, this is the Go environment. Um, once you finish deploy, you will get taken to this screen where you can see various, uh, various things about the application. Um, we've got summary screen, um, all very self-evident. We've kind of brought up the concept of instances to the summary screen so you can see if, if the, an instance is down. We've also brought out uh, beforehand, I think, instances and routes were pegged onto the bottom of the screen, and often they were on the scroll bar, so you wouldn't actually see them. So we brought those up into tabs so they're more obvious, and we've expanded on the instances screen. Um, you can see some various stats. You can scale an instance. Uh, so, yeah, I wasn't planning to use this one. Interestingly, yeah, we've, we've ex exceeded the, the memory limit on this one. But I can scale down, um, which is less impressive. Uh, but you can, manage, you can manage instances through this screen. Uh, we've also brought out the routes uh, to a top level. Um, and there's no routes in this one because I wasn't planning to demo it. But if I were to create a route, um, I could do that here, and I could bind to it here. Um, I could also bind to an existing route. Um, and I could also see all of those or unbind here or delete those routes. Um, okay, I'm going to do the old refresh. Okay, it could be that my back end has gone down. Um, so I'll, I'll discover that in a bit. Um, also, things you could do on the application is uh, look at the services. The same kind of thing as Root, you can create those, bind, to, bind them to your application, you could unbind them. Uh, we also have the variables tab, which is kind of almost self-evident, um, and the list of events. Uh, also, what we used to show on this screen is there's a lot more to do with the services. We actually have the service marketplace hidden in this screen. Now we put it out to the top level. Um, so here we can, only, we can see we've got four services in the Cloud Foundry that's connected. What I'm going to do now is connect a new Cloud Foundry. Uh, 
and hopefully I can go back to the back to the marketplace. Um, we're going to refresh that list, and we're going to see lots of new interesting services that we could create instances of. Sorry. Oh yes, yeah, sorry. I probably yeah, probably the wrong one. Sorry, it's a good point. Um, so yes, yeah, so here we can see all, all the new services in the Cloud Foundry we've just connected. Um, and if we wanted to deploy some SQL, we could. Uh, if we wanted to see uh, some service instances that we previously created, um, this is the wall. This is the place we could do it. Again, we brought it up to the top level. Uh, we can filter. We can filter by cloud. Uh, Cloud Foundry, uh, Augur Space. Um, I'm going to briefly go through the Cloud Foundry section because a lot of that is just kind of we've, we've ported over. Um, here you can see uh, some basic stats, app number of applications in your Cloud Foundry, the orgs and users, memory uses, a list of recently updated apps. Uh, go ahead and visit the top there because we've recently updated it. Um, you can see a list of organizations, uh, users, and their roles. We do uh, role management. I'm not going to go into that now. Um, because I don't really have time. Uh, we can see the fire, we should be able to see the fire hose, but obviously something's not quite right. Uh, feature flags, build packs, stacks, and security groups. Um, oh. So one of the big things we've been working on recently is metrics. Um, so I'm gonna demo one part of that today, which is cell metrics. Uh, to do so, I'm going to connect uh, our Shadows metrics endpoint. Uh, which is thankfully successfully connected. And we can see if we go to an application, we have a new tab where you can see uh, CPU usage, memory usage, um, and disk usage over time. And we can do things like uh, have a look in the past five minutes, or we can set a custom time window. One of the other things we can do is we can go into the instances tab. We can see we can see uh, which, in, uh, which cell your instance is on. At the moment, this Cloud Foundry only has one cell, so they're all going to be uh, cell 19.0. We can drill down into that cell. We can see some more information that, um, in terms of current usage, the, the memory out of the total available, disk and containers, and if it's been healthy over time. <coughs> we also see some kind of similar metrics for this. Uh, the amount of containers remaining. So you can see here kind of it, it changed because we uh, decreased our GoEM VAP by one instance. It's gone to 242 to 243. Uh, the amount of memory remaining, disk, disk remaining. We can also see what app instances is on this cell. Uh, okay, so that's the end of the um, upstream part. What I'm gonna go through now, oh, there's one part I missed, sorry. Uh, we ported this feature over, I think it's quite snazzy. Uh, you can SSH, SSH into an instance, or you can't. Um, You've got a WebSocket problem. Hmm? That your WebSockets are yeah. not working. So I will skip over that. Um, but, uh, so th so uh, this is upstream. We have a downstream product, um, which is our SUSE Stratos cloud um, uh, console. You can see here we've customized it. It's got a new um, login screen. This is using the old login method of just username and password rather than SQL sign-on. We've got things like the copyright there. So I'm going to log into this. And here we are at the app wall again. You can see it's a little bit visually different. We've, we've changed the, or you, with, uh, with Stratos, you can customize things like the accent colors. You can also add things like the, um, the copyright is there at the bottom again. And if we go to the about page, we can see the lovely geeker there and the SUSE logo. Uh, you can add things like the EULA. Um, and one of the things also we're working on is plugins. So one of the plugins we've been working on is Kubernetes integration with the Stratos console. I'm going to briefly touch on this. So we've gone to the Kubernetes and we can see list of nodes, namespaces, pods, applications, and all. So we can drill down into things like nodes um, and see metrics for that node. Um, and that's the end of the, of the demo. I'll hand back over to Neil. Awesome. So the point of showing that last stuff, <coughs> I'll come on to it in a second, is, is that one of the things we're working on is to make it easy for people to take Stratos and customize it for their own company's um, needs. So it's, I'll mention it in a second, but this, the kind of things Richard showed there, I'll talk about as extension points we're trying to enable. So hopefully that um, whetted your appetite. If you've not seen it before, give you an idea of what's in there now. I wanted to talk about a few other things before I talk about 
roadmap. Um, kind of other stuff that we've been working on that, that we kind of felt was important um, is, is around quality to test and test automation. This is stuff that you maybe you don't see, stuff as a team what we're doing, but there's kind of no visible kind of uh, aspect to it. Uh, we're trying to work hard. We've spent a lot of time in the last couple of months, um, particularly working on this side of things. So, you know, we're trying to get to releasing more frequently. Um, I'll come on to that, but, you know, we're trying to get to a monthly release schedule at the moment. Maybe we'll go to every two weeks soon, but a monthly release to start with. And so we want to make sure that, you know, we have automated tests and automated test deployment that's working reliably. So we've always had, you know, some aspects of this, but we really want to ramp up our efforts. As I mentioned at the start, there are many ways of deploying Stratos. So you can push it to Cloud Foundry. You can push it to Cloud Foundry with single sign-on enabled. You can push it to Cloud Foundry with um, backed by a MySQL database or a Postgres database. So we want to make sure that all those different deployment, that matrix of deployment um, approaches is, is all tested. So we, you know, we're leveraging Travis for our um, CI pipeline. You can, if you submit a PR, that will run against it, and you can you see it itself. It's running the E2E tests. You know, we now have those that are capturing videos of the screens as those tests run. So if there are problems, we can diagnose where the problems are. Um, we see a lot of issues with reliability. If things run a little bit slower in, Strat in um, Travis, some of the tests might start failing. So we've been fixing those holes to make them more resilient to timing issues. Uh, we've extended the U2 test suite. So we've got roughly four or five times as many tests as we had in V1. So we're testing much more of Stratos from uh, an end-to-end -end perspective. Um, and we're trying to leverage more open source tools. So you'll see us use things like Code, Climate, Go Report. Recently, we're integrated browser stack so that we can start to run our end to end tests against uh, Firefox, Safari, more browsers, and more devices, basically. So, all this is just saying, you know, we are working hard to kind of make sure that we have automated systems in place to kind of make sure the quality is still there, stuff doesn't break, and we can have good confidence when we release. As I said, going forward, uh, we do want to release monthly. So, we took a bit of a hit this year, as I mentioned, with the 2.0 release, where that was a major refactor. Uh, we're at the stage now that we want to release monthly. So there was a release in September. There will be a release in October this month, next week or the week after, whenever October ends. Um, and we're very community-driven. So we rely on our users. Obviously, SUSE has things it would like to see in the UI. But we rely on you guys to help us to prioritize the features you'd like to see in Stratos, uh, bugs, improvements, entire new features. Please submit um, issues into GitHub. Um, you know, get us on Slack. Uh, help us understand your needs and where we see you know, the community wanting, uh, you know, where there's stuff that clearly many people want. We can prioritize that higher up the, uh, the backlog. And across releases, you know, we, this is maybe you know, basic stuff, but we try and blend a mix of working on things like improving test coverage and test automation, you're paying down technical debt, as well as bug fixes and improvements and new features. So across any particular release, you'll see a mix of those. So some releases may not seem to have many new features in, and that'll be because we're working on some of this other stuff. Uh, stuff that's coming up, not a whole lot of detail here at the moment, but you know, October extensions, I'll mention this in a sec, is maybe the big thing we're putting in. You saw Richard demonstrate the kind of stuff that we're adding in from Suze's um, ability. We want to make sure that other people can do the same thing. So we're going to have some extensions uh, points in there. The metrics, which I talked about, will be in this release. I think coming up in November, the plan is to support um, GitLab as an application deployment mechanism. And that's really a forerunner to kind of refactoring that a little bit so it's easier to add any um, source code repository in there. Uh, scalability improvements. So again, from the survey, it was clear people are uh, using quite a large scale in, in some places. Somebody was um, using 20,000 apps for the service they were running, and they wondered whether they could use Stratos, and uh, the kind of answer there was no. Um, so, but there are things we can do to make Stratos not degrade, but work well when you have a large amount of scale. And some of this, I'll come on to it, some of this is due to the way we use the V2 API and limits of having multiple cloud foundries. Uh, Jason schema support, so our friends in Orange have um, done some work uh, and submitted a PR that we're trying to get through um, and get into the system. So there's a lot of stuff around the open service broker that we want to track, being able to um, use the JSON schemas and have a UI that presents itself a form based on the scheme for that service is something that we're going to add. And then December, December we're kind of uh, Christmas month, I guess, so we will do a bit of a blitz. So whether there's bugs, minor issues, we'll get those out of the way. Um, we're going to update to Angular 7, which should be out by then. 
which should give us some performance improvements. And uh, we're going to look at the private source repository support. So briefly on extensions, which is coming this month. <clears throat> so the current approach is, you know, you take Stratos, you fork it, and you can apply your customizations in a way that means that when we make changes upstream, you can just rebase those and hopefully have no conflicts. That's the intent. It's not currently anything around dynamic plugins. We you know, may go down the, down the line. The intent currently is to allow people to take Stratos, customize it for their organization. And these are the kind of things you can do. So we, we already go beyond what you could do in V1. We're, particularly on the front end, trying to do it in a way that makes it very easy for people to develop extensions. So if you're familiar with Angular, there's the notion of components. So we want, or we'll get, you know, this is how we actually do it. If you have an Angular component, so if you're using the Angular CLI, you can do ng generate component to give you a, a simple component. You can then simply apply an annotation or decorator around that component that says, I want this to be a tab. I want it to be an application tab. Here's my label, and here's the, the link I want you to use in the root. And so then, if you can cast back to Richard's demo where he went into an application, you'll suddenly get a new tab appear, and when you click on that, your component will fill that page. And so we can use the same thing for adding to the side nav. We can use the same thing for adding actions in the top bar, and we'll be using uh, the same approach to let you replace tiles in many of the card views. So very quickly, roadmap. Um, so some of these I mentioned in the upcoming releases, but other stuff that we've kind of got on the roadmap that we'd like your help to prioritize. Uh, more around application deployment, so we talked about GitLab and maybe Bitbucket, other providers, being able to um, talk not only to public GitHub, but an enterprise GitHub, and to be able to use your own tokens to talk to private repositories. The scalability we talked about, finding ways to make sure we can handle large orgs and spaces and uh, users and apps. Uh, kind of a new aspect that's been floated is to start to bring out the ability to manage users in the UAA, and also maybe clients. Uh, our friends at cloud.gov, uh, raise the next one, which is the ability to kind of invite users into the organization. So they have this cool way that, as a user, you can kind of, or an org manager, you go into an org and you can just click invite, enter emails, you use the UAA API to kind of send them an invite link to create the account, but also in the background, they can then already um, give that user permissions for that org. So once they've logged in, they're all set to go. Uh, internationalization is something we're waiting for on Angular 7, so as soon as that's out, we'll, uh, we'll get that in there. And then more on the service enhancements. So clearly services is, I think, an area where uh, a lot of people have a lot of interest. It's uh, what we have is a big improvement on what we had in V1, but there's things like service plans, service keys that we want to uh, be able to manage within the UI as well. Um, bringing all some spaces for you to the top level. So with our refactor, the hierarchy is kind of within the Cloud Foundry. I think there's something we can do from a UX point of view to improve the ability to kind of navigate and browse your way around orgs and spaces and get a kind of quick view. Uh, maybe a biggie is v3 API support, so we're aware there's lots going on there. Um, I think we're keen at this um, conference to try and hook up with those guys and uh, make our use cases kind of known to them. We're quite different to the CLI in terms of use cases. We have much more complex use cases. Um, Richard's written a document here which kind of maybe helps you understand how we use the, uh, the API and some of the challenges we have there. Again, particularly working with multiple cloud foundries, uh, we have some issues. And so we're hoping that we can get some of those addressed so we can improve the uh, responsiveness of the UI um, when it makes API calls. And then there's other things being floated like, you know, SNCC integration. It would be great to be able to go to your app and get, get that in, in kind of in-page. I don't know if we're necessarily going to do that ourselves, but we want to make sure that we have the right extension points that can, people can do those kind of integrations. And we'd love to see other people in the community starting to use the customization mechanism to kind of build those sorts of things and then feed those upstream into the core product. And then lastly, another one from the cloud uh, gov, gov guys is being able to have more visual um, representations of orgs and spaces, uh, applications and services and how those relate to each other. So finishing up, kind of we need your help. So help us improve Stratos, please, as I started out by saying. Um, help us kind of prioritize and use those features. If you've never used it, take it for a spin. If you are using it, please let us know, because that's um, it's always great to know we've actually got users out there. Uh, your contributions could be anything, right? We're happy to take bug fixes or bug reports, uh, feature requests, just ideas. Hey, it'd be great to do this. Or the UX for this isn't great. If you've got, can you think of a way of improving it? I find it quite hard. Um, or even uh, code. Yeah, we'll take PRs, um, fixes, all that kind of stuff. And then lastly, we have a monthly call. So up until now, 
Uh, every month we kind of do a project update. We try to talk a bit about what we've been doing. Um, we've had some success in terms of people uh, tuning into that. What we're going to do with our monthly release process is we will do our release and then uh, later on in that month we will have this call and we'll use it to go over that release, what's in it, hear from our community as to what they would like to see and give us some feedback. So hopefully it will be a more useful call for people. So we encourage you to attend that. Details of that will be on our Slack channel. So that's it from me and from Richard. I hope you enjoyed the talk. Uh, we do have an office hours session later on today. So if you have any other questions that we can't answer now or you'd like to come and talk to us in more depth, then we'll be there for half an hour. Um, GitHub repos there, so take a look, uh, fork it, uh, report issues, find us on Slack. Thank you. I don't know if your mind is that blown, but mine is, <laughs> and I've seen this multiple times. These guys are amazing. Uh, hopefully you have some more questions, you have some questions for them. Uh, let's see. No? All right, I'll, I'll okay, perfect. Um, you show some app metrics there. Do you show metrics from service instances as well? We do not yet, no. So we've, we just have app metrics. Um, at the moment, we've done the cell metrics as well. That's the new stuff we currently have. We don't have service stuff at the moment. But um, now that we've kind of got the core framework in place, we can start to add more metrics in. Um, and we want to tie them into the Cloud Foundry kind of model. So that would be a good one to add in. Yeah, I can add that to the roadmap. Any other questions? Ah. Over there. I was wondering if you could share some details or elaborate on the customization and how it's going to take place in terms of the skinning. Is it styling or is it some ap approach for, for doing that customization? The skinning? Yes. Um, yeah, I can say a little bit now. Maybe if you're interested, you can come along to the office hours. I can go into more depth. So the skinning, because we switched over to material design, they have quite a nice um, theming. Uh, mechanism that's well documented. So we've adopted their theming approach. So they have um, the ability to specify like various palettes. So you could go down to sort of several layers of theming. So to start with, you can say, here are my colors or my color scheme, my primary kind of palette, and that will do the core of the UI. We've had to introduce a few other palettes, so you can change the palettes for like the status colors, for example, and a couple of the nav areas. So to, do, to kind of do the core color stuff, you just have to declare maybe two or three palettes. Um, really, you only need to do one, and then you can, you can kind of choose. So if you do the other ones, then we'll pick those up. Otherwise, you'll get defaults. Um, that's kind of the core. In terms of logo, then there are particular files that you can replace. So you, can have, a, you have a separate customization file folder. If certain resources are there, they will be used in preference to the defaults, essentially. So that gets you most of the replacement of logos and the, um, the colors. If you want to do things like swap out the login screen, for example, like we've done at SUSE, then again, there's a way of using a decorator to say, use this as my login screen. And so you then just have to create your own login components. Obviously, with Angular, you can extend the default one. So you can do that, say this is the one to use, and then just change the HTML page, basically. Font customization as well? Font, fonts and... and yeah, fonts um, is, let's see, yes, there's a, a way of doing that with material design as well, um, which I can't remember. But um, it's easy to swap out the fonts. Thank you. Great presentation. Thank you. Anything else? So I'll finish up by. Oh, there's one, one there. Um, what kind of roles does Stratos support? I mean, you have like this model like org roles and you have like space roles, but I read there's also like a global role. So we we use so when you connect your Cloud Foundry, as mm -hmm. Richard did with IBM, yeah. when you come back. We go out to Cloud Foundry and we make a number of calls to figure out what your permissions are. So we're bound by your permissions with Cloud Foundry. So we obviously, against the API, we can't do anything as you that you're not allowed to do. Um, but we obviously try and read the permissions, so we only present to you what you're allowed to do. In terms of applications, obviously, you know, that will depend on your roles. When you dive into a Cloud Foundry, it will obviously depend on your role. So if you have Cloud Controller read or write, you're an admin, you'll see everything. So you'll see the bill packs. You'll be able to manage users. If you're a, an org manager or, an, or a you know, space manager, you'll only be able to you know, have permissions within the part of the system you're allowed to, to uh, administer, and you'll only see those. So you won't see orgs and spaces that you're not, obviously not allowed to access. No, okay. Yeah, so that's all taken cool. care of. Oh, thank you. Can you touch on a bit more on 
submitting feedback or submitting suggestions on that. So just to be background, so I'm an IBMer. We use this, and our customers really like it. Personally, as a developer, I love it so far, so great work. Uh, but giving more feedback and also especially on the functionality additions on the, on, on the UI itself, is it only GitHub or are you guys planning to have this integrated within the platform so you can go in and submit the suggestions or feedback? Yeah, that's a great question. So we don't have it integrated in the app yet. That's something we, we certainly could do. Um, I think somebody, I think maybe it was our friends Orange had suggested uh, integrating some analytics as well so we can see where people are using the app. Probably some issues around that, but it's something that we could also look at doing again. Uh, we could put the feedback in, that would be great. In terms of, so that you know, people using it, this isn't, you know, would be able to say this is not great, you know, click and fill out a box. So we can certainly consider that. In terms of direct feedback from yourself as, a, as somebody that maybe has heard from users, then you know, ping us on Slack, submit issues. We're happy to have you know, phone calls or, or virtual meetings with anybody. Come along to the monthly meeting. Uh, we can, you know, we've already set up meetings with Orange and Cloud.gov guys, for example, to get their input directly. So if you've, if you've got stuff you want to discuss, and you'd rather do it kind of directly, then just ping us and we'll, we'll make time for that. So I'll finish up by telling you a one minute story about Stratos, about myself and using it. So last year in Boston, they didn't come, and I was doing this overview of all the extensions. And then I wanted to show Stratos, but the IBM integration wasn't quite ready. So of course he's in the UK, Neil, and I sent him a Slack message, dude, I need any environment, can you send it to me so I can try it and demo it? And then he's like, okay, yeah, yeah. And then very quickly he responded, of course I don't know what time it was, so it was crazy, so that's testament to Neil and, and the team. And then of course I'm now on my Uber to the uh, conference and I'm using my phone, which he didn't talk about, so this thing works also on your phone, okay? And I'm essentially connecting to uh, using Stratos, connecting to an environment on IBM, deploying and seeing the deployment on my phone, and then getting into my session and demoing it. That is Stratos, that is SUSE, and that is Neil and his team. So, thank you. Thank you, thank you Dr. Max. Well, thank you, everyone. Enjoy the conference. Yeah. There's lunch now, and then the next session is at 2.30. And don't forget office hours if you want to come and talk to us and hear more.